الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد from the أصول أهل السنة and the aqida of Ahl Sunnah, where we get our aqida, our creed from, is returning to the masdar of the religion. And these are just some lessons taken from Durus Muhammad Li Ammatul Ummah Fil Aqida by Sheikh Dr. Ahmed ibn Muhammad as Sadiq al Najjar, half of Allah Ta'ala. It was a very beneficial compilation of some durus relating to Aqidah. In the last sitting, we spoke about the importance of Tawheed and Iman in general, and Aqidah and Creed in general. And so it is only appropriate that we begin to talk about the Mesta or the Usul of where, where do we get this Aqidah? Mesta Talaki in the Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a. So the the foundation from which Ahlul Sunnati will Jama'a takes their religion from. Where where do we get this creed from? When we talk about Aqidah, when we talk about Menhaj, when we talk about Iman, when we talk about all of these things, where does this come from? It comes from Kitabi La wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Ijma. And Al-Qa'idah or Qa'idah Minhajiyah Min Al-Dalal. So uh, the Shaykh mentioned that we take our religion from the book, meaning the Quran, which is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is also revelation, and the Ijma', the Ijma', the consensus of the ulama or ahl ijtihad and he said a very important minhaji principle which protects from misguidance minhaj meaning uh, methodology so this shows us this is the methodology of the salaf this is the methodology of the salafiyun this is the methodology of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah this is the methodology of ah, uh, ahl athar this is the methodology of firqat al najia this is the uh, methodology of the people of the book and the sunnah so this principle to protect us from misguidance is faham al kitabi wa sunnah يَجِبُ أَنْ يُكُونَ عَلَى وِفْكِ فَهَمَ السَّلَفَ الصَّالِحِ He said that this, this principle, which will protect us from misguidance, it is understanding the book and the sunnah, and that it's an obligation to be with the understanding of the pious predecessors. So that means when we understand the Qur'an, in order to understand proper interpretation of the Qur'an, we go back to the Salaf. We go back to the early generations from the Sahaba, is beginning that that is the origin of the Jama'ah. When we talk about Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the original Jama'ah and the Asl of the Jama'ah is the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and Majma'een. And so, in understanding the Qur'an, and understanding the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because obviously there are verses in the Qur'an which are muhkam and there are verses which are uh, mutishabi and those verses which are muhkam the mufassireen, the people of tafsir explain it in, in different ways but Basically, probably the most, the easiest way we could describe those verses which are clear and un unambiguous. Those are clear verses which are clear rulings which are indisputable. No one debates about them, no one disputes them because it's very clear, like Salat, even Ahl Bida, even the non Muslims know that Muslims pray five times a day 
and this is in accordance with the emir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ and establish the prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us with the prayer. This is clear. This is muhkim. There's no, uh, there's no other interpretations for that. And the mutashabi, or the mutashabihat, those are the verses which are more ambiguous, which are liable to uh, interpretation, to other meanings. They're not as clear. And so, this is where Ahl bidah they move in and they establish their foundation principles. For example, when we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rising above his throne, as many people of Ahl bidah they dispute this, the, Ash the Ashadis, people who have, uh, who are affected by Mu'tazila and Jahamiya Aqida and, and these other groups that were from uh, the people of deviation from before, that often they will dispute some negate that Allah rules above his throne. Some even tried to say, oh, linguistically, uh, istoa doesn't mean rise. They come up with all kind of false arguments, which have no hujja. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, you know, hat barhanakum in kuntum sadaqeen. You know, bring your proof if you're truthful. Bring your proof if you're truthful. So what you find is ahl bid'ah for proofs is they will go to verses which are not clear or not muhkam in their interpretation in order to deviate or in order to misguide the people and be spreaders of misguidance. Their qast, their niya, their intention is not to spread misguidance mostly. Most of the people, they believe they're on the haq, the ashadis, if you talk to many of them or if you talk to the group uh, ahl, from Ahl uh, Zayg wa Batil um, the group, the sect, which is a more contemporary sect, uh, and their leader was Abdullah Hariri, the uh, Ahbash, that you'll see, they call themselves Jamaat al-Ahbash, but who before them? How can they say they follow the Kitab and the Sunnah, and they call themselves something which has no relation to Kitab, wala Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wala Faham al-Salaf al who from the Salaf understood their false arguments and their belittlement and their lies about the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their negation of those verses to try to give them new meanings, new interpretations. Or they piggyback and take the interpretations of Ahla Zayg wa 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 batal wa ahwa from before them. Wa iyadan billah min So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clear that he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar-Rahman ala ash istawa, that the most merciful rules above his throne. Ahl sunnah we say, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rules above his throne. And we take that understanding from the book of Allah, taking it in its apparent meaning, and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from those ahadith which also refer to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having divine uh, names and attributes and that we don't negate those attributes and we, we accept them as they are and we understand their meaning and we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to those uh, divine attributes that they are in a manner that suits his majesty this is what Ahl Sunnah says and this is Ahl Sunnah Qadimin wa Hadithin this is Ahl Sunnah a principle from Ahl Sunnah from before the Salaf of this Ummah up until now we say this so this is the importance, going back to the main uh, principle that we mentioned, فَهَمْ الْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّ يَجِبُ أَنْ يَكُونَ عَلَى وِفْكِ عَلَى وِفْكِ فَهَمْ السَّلَفِ الصَّالِحِ That understanding the Qur'an and the Sunnah is an obligation uh, to be in adherence with the understanding of the pious predecessors. And with that, أَحَبَ التَّفِلَّهِ with these three masadir, this masdar of the religion, we said the book, kitab, which of course refers to the Quran, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really spoke with subhana. This is his uh, kalam haqiqi. This is what Ahl Sunnah believes. We don't say it's an ibarah on kalam. 
as the Asha'ira and other groups say, we don't negate it or try to make ta'wil, ta'wil which does not come from dhiril, which comes from their intellect. And this is where Ahla Zayd and Ahla Bid'ah, where they deviate from Ahla Sunnah. فَمَا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْقٌ فِيَأْتَبِيُونَ مَا تَشَبَهَ مِنْ إِبْتِغَالْ فِتْنَ وَإِبْتِغَالْ تَعْوِيلٍ And as for those whose hearts, who are misguided, whose hearts, فَمَا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَلْ فَمَا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْقٌ فِيَأْتَبِيُونَ مَا تَشَبَهَ مِنْ Those whose hearts are deviant, that they follow those verses which are uh, ambiguous. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And then Ahl al-Bid'ah, they came after and they did exactly that. And they seek to find uh, uh, proof to make their ta'wil, to explain it in a manner that suits their intellect, not based on the wifq, the salaf al not based on the understanding of the salaf of this ummah. The second masadar, is the Sunnah of the Prophet And here, he, uh, the Shaykh mentioned, So one can at Qawliyan, O Fa'liyan, O Taqririyan, O Tarkiyan. He mentions that when we talk about the Sunnah of the Prophet and being the, uh, the second Masfar of the religion, that we're talking about the statements of the Prophet these are that are authentic, the actions of the Prophet وسلم, that are authentic, or those things which the Prophet وسلم, accepted or agreed with, or those things which the Prophet وسلم, left, that he left it, then this is a part of the Sunnah to leave that. So we leave that, we stay away from that. So these are the two main masadir of the religion. Then we get the, the third masdar is the ijma'. And then he describes what ijma'. And of course the ulama, they do have differences with this ta'rif, with this uh, opinion. There's difference of um, uh, definitions. But this is appropriate for us here. The Shaykh says, وَهُوَ إِتِّفَاقْ مُجْتَاهِدِ الْأُمَّةِ عَلَىٰ أَمْرَ الشِّرْعِ بَعْدَ وَفَاتَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم He said that the ijma' this third maratiba adilla or this third level of, uh, of proofs and from the, uh, the foundation of the religion is the ijma' and it is the agreeance or consensus of those of the people of Ahl Ijtihad of the Ummah meaning not all the Ummah needs to agree but rather it is those people of knowledge in Ijtihad that they uh, have some uh, have agreements and the ulama they differ with regards to whether uh, Ijma means every single Alam from that era or uh, era or if it means uh, majority and, and and so forth, they they all have they have some diff, different differences in definition. But the point being is that ijma it comes into effect, and the asal of the ijma is those things which the Sahaba رضي الله تعالى عنهم اجمعين agreed upon, and those things either could be in fiqh or it could be. In of course in Aqidah. In Aqidah we say that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een did not differ. They did not differ, especially in major Messiah of Aqidah. You don't have any Sahaba who say, oh, uh, Estoa means Estola, like the Asha'ida say. And you don't have any Sahaba who, uh, you know, have the minhaj and the understanding of the Khawarij. And you don't have any Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een who uh, have the methodology in the Aqidah and the creed of the Shia. We don't have that. alhamd. But rather they had ijma. They they were the ijma. They're the asal of the ijma for understanding our religion. 
and they were based they based it based on kitab Allah wa sunnah rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they were the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and so what they had consensus upon uh, as far as aqidah and as far as fiqh that this is what we say is ijma and consensus because they didn't differ with regards to those matters a last point I want to mention the question then arises why don't we need our intellect or use our intellect to understand our aqidah why not use our intellect to understand our aqidah? And notice, uh, Habitifillah, this is the minhaj of the Ashari's, the minhaj of the uh, many Sufis who take Ashari uh, understanding because they, they have uh, their tasawwuf. Generally, they are, especially in more contemporary times, they have the creed, uh, as far as their creed is Ashari or Maturidiya or uh, other Sufi sects, which take their main source of creed from an Ashari understanding with regards to the divine uh, attributes and sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is their minhaj, is to take, give the intellect precedence over the nasus. And I'll give you an example. As we mentioned before, on the sunnah we say, you know, nuthbit ma athbat Allah Wa Rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the sunnah, we affirm what Allah affirms about himself and what his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, affirmed about him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, you know, from authentic narrations. This is what Ahl sunnah, what we believe. If Allah said he, he, he rose above his throne, we believe he rose above his throne. Ahl al-Bid'ah, how do they make their intellect precede their, their, the nusus? They give this taqdeem over the nusus by saying, well, it means this, though. Instead of just saying, yes, ar-Rahman ala ars istawa, he rose above his throne. They say, no, if you say that he rose above his throne, you've made him like his, his creation because I, wrote, I stand up and I rise and I sit. So you're saying Allah rises and sit, therefore you've made Allah a man. And a, all of this is from their intellect. Ahl Sunnah is free from that. Ahl Sunnah, we accept the Nasus. Allah said it about himself. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say it more than seven times so that way we can come up with new uh, intellectual discourse and not really understand who Allah is and say that Allah, uh, that it means estola or that we negate it or we make some other false ta'wil and we say it means power and we say his hand means power and we say this and we you know, all of these ta'wilat that don't go to the dalil nor often do they go to the Arabic language which was the language in which the Quran and the Sunnah was revealed in. So this shows us the difference in minhads, the difference in methodology for understanding the text and why we're so far on some of these issues. So the Sheikh then said, would Jawab have a swell? The, the answer to this question, meaning why don't we use our intellect for aqidah? He said, so this is uh, beautiful. The Shaykh just said, very clearly, very simple argument. The reason we don't give precedence to our intellect uh, over the text is that the creed, creed, ittiqad, and belief is an issue that deals with the unseen. And we don't witness that. For example, you don't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see the beauty in his creation. We see that this one is this color, and this one speaks this language, and this one is tall, and this one is short, and this and the trees are beautiful, and the forest is this. We see this. And the wonders of the air, and the wonders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, and the detail of the human body. We see this. These are the signs. These are ayat koniya. These are the, the, the signs in the creation. So we see that, we witness that. But these are amur ghaybiya. We don't, we can't deduce this from our intellect. You're not going to deduce from your intellect all of the wonders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, nor 
are you going to deduce from your intellect all these amur, these affairs of creed and akida? And then he, so he said, uh, we don't witness that because we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've never seen our Lord Subhanahu. And we believe in Jannah. We've never seen Jannah. We believe in the hellfire. We've never seen the hellfire. We believe Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa existed and he was the last of the prophets alayhi salatu wasalam. We never saw him. We believe in Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam. We never saw him. Up to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. And we believe in the angels. We've never seen them. These are amur ghaibiyah. And so it is not possible to use the intellect uh, uh, to derive these affairs. So instead, we get these affairs from the khabar, meaning from the, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I'll end by the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif, after Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif la mim, dhalika al-kitab Allah raiba fi hudin al-muttaqin, alladhin yu'minun bil-ghayb, wa yu'qimun al-salaa, wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after Alif la mim, dhalika al-kitab Allah raiba fi, this is the book in which there is no doubt. That is a book in which there is no doubt. Hudin al-muttaqin, a guidance for the, the pious. Alladhin yu'minun bil-ghayb, who are these pious? Alladhin yu'minun bil-ghayb. Those who believe in the unseen, that's piety, that's iman. Amur ghaybiyah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions ghaybiyah. So Ahl sunnah we believe in that. And we follow kitab illa wa sunnah rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala wifqa salaf al-salih, regardless of who, who dislikes that. Regardless if the people want to follow this person and this person who say that aqidah, is not important, or Aqidah is not in the Quran, or Tawheed is not mentioned in the Quran. The people who say this will Allah understand. Are they guiding people to Jannah? Are they guiding people to Nar? Wa iyadhamillah min dhalika wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.